Okay. I have um, spent some time doing some weaving and I've come really to the end of my yarn and mainly students will say, I'm done, what do I do now? I actually want you to weave until you have absolutely no yarn left, which might mean that you have to weave your needle through and then put your yarn through the needle and pull the needle through until all the yarn then is woven into um, our warp threads. Then you need to choose what is your next color and I think I'm going to kind of go with this little color scheme. Um, I didn't do very good planning I'll admit because I have no more of this green left so it's going to kind of just be the anchor at the bottom. But I think I'm going to go with this brown um, ish colored yarn next that has a little metallic thread running through it. So I'm going to go ahead and thread my needle and get my yarn ready to rock and roll and of course you know since I had bundled it up all neatly I'll have a nice knot at the end. Oh there we go all fresh and ready to go. What I have the kids do is I have them back up about an inch and this is the one time that what they're doing should be exactly what they had done before um, and then just keep going and at this point once they get past what they already have there then it becomes opposite what they did the last time around. So now I've ended on an over. I'm going to go ahead and pull this through. And what I'm going to do is get right up to the end and I'm going to pull it all the way in and kind of comb it down as I've been doing and now I'm going to just keep going. So I've ended with an over. I've got to catch my under on the side and then go ahead and keep going. And as you continue to go, um, you're not going to even be able to tell where you have switched to a new color or simply just to a new piece of yarn because you're not going to see it. It's just going to be a part of the weaving. So now you're going to just continue um, in this process, again, if you want to do any um, decorative um, stitching where you have, you know, different patterns of weaving, um, this would be a time that you could, you know, again, incorporate any of those types of ideas. You know, let's see, I'm at an over, so I'm going to go an under. And with any luck at all, things are going to come out just perfect here. And now you can see where I've started with my brown yarn the time around before I am indeed going opposite what I need to do. So um, next time I click the video camera on here it will probably be to show you how you're going to deal with finishing up and being clear up to the very top here and then tying off to this particular thread to keep everything together when we pull the pins out to be done. So I'm going to continue weaving. You continue doing what you're doing and um, we'll catch back up when we're up here and ready to go. Okay, as you can see, I've done quite a bit of more weaving and I'm nearing getting to the top of what is the front piece of our cardboard um, loom. And so the kids are going to get to this point and they're going to say, I can't possibly go any further. It's too hard. Well, it's possible that they may have to take just one or two stitches um, t at a time to make it happen because it is tight once you get up into this area. But we want it to be as tight as we can get it um, so that we have a nice firm weaving all the way up to that top and in fact usually when we get to about this point they'll say am I done with this part and I'll say mm, you got about five more times to go around and they absolutely panic but it's really important to keep going even if all you can do is one thread at a time it's really important to continue to do that until um, you can get just absolutely up to the top where it's like you're really struggling to pull the, the eye of the needle through, which I'm not at that point yet. So I'm going to keep going a couple more rounds and then we'll talk about how to tie off here and then how to proceed with making our flat. 